Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Will Bolsowitz, U.S. Medical Director of ZOE, and today I'm bringing you the third update from the UK's biggest ever survey on bowel habits and gut health, the Big Poo Review. I'll be sharing some of the latest insights from the survey, and this time we're going to look at a topic that I know you're interested in, whether you will admit it and talk about it or not. We're going to talk about farting, flatulence, or as some of you may call it, breaking wind. <laughs> I'll be chatting through who in the UK and which region farts the most and the least, why we fart, and sharing some of my top tips to help you out just in case you wanted to understand why you're farting so much and what we can do to address that issue. So let's first take a look at the data. It's time for us to answer the question that everyone wants to know. Who is farting the most in the UK? And who is more discreet and farting the least? I have the answer. You're about to find out. When we start first looking in terms of the gender distribution, those identifying as men report breaking wind on average nine times per day. Now, this is slightly more than women who report breaking wind on average eight times per day. When you look at this, it's not a really dramatic difference. These are people reporting the number that they suspect in terms of how often they're farting on a daily basis. And what I find to be encouraging is that both genders are acknowledging that they actually fart. So, um, Thank you for your contribution to science. When we look at the age distribution, there was something interesting that we discovered. In the Big Poo Review, younger people are reporting higher rates of flatulence compared to older people. Now, this is actually the opposite of what I would have expected. Uh, typically, we expect people to have higher rates of flatulence when their bowels mo slow down, when... Um, their microbiome is less diverse, um, or potentially when they're eating more fermentable foods. So why exactly is this? We're going to have to dig a little bit deeper into the data to understand this. And I don't yet have the answer, but I will be very curious to take a look at some of the associated comorbid conditions, for example, constipation. And I'll be very interested to look at, we do have a population of people who provided uh, nutritional data through a food frequency questionnaire. And I'll be very curious to take a look at that as well. Now, uh, in terms of extremes, in the Big Poo Review, we did have 1,440 people who report that they break wind more than 40 times per day. This accounts for approximately 1% of the survey responders. Um, that's a bit much. And to be honest with you, if you are breaking wind that often, I think that you should certainly discuss this with your medical doctor. And um, it's worth looking into to make sure that there's not a medical condition that is causing this to happen. On the flip side, there were 2,234 people who say that they never fart. This is 1.6% of the population. And I have to tell you something. I think you're lying. Everybody farts. Except for my wife. Anyway, uh, let's go to the map and take a look at our map of the UK. And you can see here that where there is yellow, people are farting the most. And where there is blue, people are farting the least. So as we take a look at the map, you see this yellow territory jumping off the map. And those are our champion farters. This is North Lanarkshire. They're farting 10 times a day. Some other areas where people are breaking wind at an uh, extremely elevated rate relative to others are Wolverhampton, 9.4 times a day, and Glasgow, 9 times a day. 
there seems to be something in the water in Scotland. Because up there, up north, y'all are cutting the cheese quite a bit. Now, flip side. We're looking at the blue territories. Where are people farting the least? Telford and Reckon is reporting 6.7 farts per day. Westminster, 6.8 times a day. And Chiltern, also 6.8 times a day. These people are either passing gas the least or they are the most likely to lie about how often they are passing gas. <laughs> now, when we look at these regions up in Scotland where flatulence was the highest, it's interesting. 57.6% of the respondents here feel this is not a problem. So that basically means about three out of five people, they're just going to fart and they don't care. And that's, I think, kind of interesting and cool. And I do wonder if this attitude where it's like, look, farting is just not a problem. We all do it. And I'm just going to cut it loose when I feel like I have to. Uh, if that, If this attitude is prevalent, as we're seeing here, Maybe this, in part, explains why they're owning up to more frequent flatulence. On the flip side, 24.9%, um, about 25% of respondents, feel that farting is embarrassing because they can't hold it. And 24.5%, once again, about 25% of respondents, feel it's embarrassing because of the smell. On the, on the flip side, a smaller percentage... 14%, 14.3% feel it's embarrassing because of how often it happens. And a very small percentage, only 4.6% in these areas, again, we're still talking about these areas where people have the highest rates of flatulence, only 4.6% of respondents feel that this is embarrassing and impacts their quality of life. So... Uh, while we aim to share data on the whole of the UK, you might notice that there's a gap in the results from some of our regions, for example, in Northern Ireland. And that's unfortunately down to the amount of data gathered where in those areas, we just didn't have enough data to draw meaningful conclusions. If you want to see how your region stacks up in the surveys, make sure you download the Zoe Health Study app and join in next time because then you'll be able to get access to that. Okay, so you're wondering, what is farting? And why do we do it? Well, farting, I mean, as I'm quite sure that you know, is when we break wind or pass gas. Um, we are expelling gas. And um, by expelling the intestinal gas, this helps to reduce the volume of that intestinal gas. And, and in doing that, you are reducing the pressure within your digestive system. Uh, which generally results in you feeling more comfortable and reducing the sensation of bloating. This is a great thing. We, we actually want to fart because it makes us feel better. Now, if you don't, you're going to be bottling it up. The pressure starts to build. Your abdomen balloons out. And you become increasingly uncomfortable. So please, I beg of you, when you have to fart, let it go. Let it flow. Discreetly, of course. The volume of gas passed per rectum, according to science, varies from between 500 and 1500 milliliters per day. And prior research has suggested that the frequency of flatus generally falls somewhere between 10 and 20 times per day in healthy subjects. So, that's about what we're seeing in this study. Most individuals who uh, actually report excessive flatulence, believe it or not, when we look at how often they pass gas, they are within the normal range. So, so this suggests that many people who feel that they pass gas more frequently, they actually are passing gas at a normal rate. It's just more of a perception issue. All intestinal gas comes from one of two places. The first is air that is swallowed. Once air enters the body, it has to come out one way or the other. 
The first way it can come out is you swallow it down and then you could belch it right back up. Then it's out. Um, this can be a good thing because then it doesn't have to wiggle its way through all of your intestines, adding to intestinal gas, potentially making you feel bloated, and then ultimately being expelled out the other side as a fart. Now, the second way that we can increase our intestinal gas is through microbial fermentation. Have you ever made sauerkraut at home? If you have, then you know that gas gets released when microbes ferment carbohydrates. And by the way, you would see this with many different forms of fermentation, not just sauerkraut. You see it in a sourdough starter. This is a normal part of the process. Fiber and FODMAPs are carbohydrates that you will find in food that can be fermented by the microbes in our intestines. And that's because they actually are food for our microbes. We call them prebiotics. So when you consume foods that contain fiber and FODMAPs, you should expect more intestinal gas. And this isn't a bad thing. It's a sign that you're eating healthy food and that your microbes are actually doing their job and that you're feeding those microbes with prebiotics. But if I were to take a step back, thinking about this as a gastroenterologist, there are in general four basic places that increased intestinal gas comes from. So when I approach these issues in a clinic with a patient, I'm thinking about these four specific places that intestinal gas can come from. Number one, swallowing air. Number two, abnormal bowel motility. Specifically, I'm thinking about constipation, but also diarrhea can be associated with increased intestinal gas. Number three, fermentable foods. We were just mentioning the fiber and the FODMAPs. Number four, a damaged gut microbiome. That microbiome is struggling to process and digest your food. So what can you do if you have a farting issue? Well, let's think about these four specific things and what are the strategies that we can use literally starting today to address these four specific things. Number one, to reduce the amount of air that we swallow, eliminate straws, stop chewing gum or sucking on hard candies, and don't drink carbonated drinks. When you sit down for a meal, take your time. Have good, controlled swallows. Number two, when it comes to motility, make sure that you are not constipated. If you are constipated, treat the constipation and you will be amazed at how the flatulence and the bloating will improve. If you want to learn more about this topic, check out the Zoe Science and Nutrition podcast that I did all about constipation and you can learn the basics in a powerful way in less than 20 minutes. Number three, ease off the fermentable foods. So a good place to start, what I would often recommend is the at least temporary elimination of dairy products and artificial sweeteners. A huge percentage of people, when they do this, they will see substantial improvements in their gas and bloating. Now, in some cases, it may require you to go further into your diet, and this may include a low FODMAP diet. And the best thing to do with regard to the low FODMAP diet is to do this under the guidance of a dietitian. And number four, when it comes to improving your gut microbiome, add more probiotics to your diet. You can do this with fermented foods that include kefir and yogurt. In some cases, a probiotic supplement can help as well. Ultimately, if flatulence, gas, bloating are affecting your quality of life or you have concerns, you should chat with your GP to make sure that there's no underlying health condition affecting your bowel health. So in conclusion, we found that on average, the top farters are up in Scotland. I salute you. And in perhaps news that may, ne may not be surprising to everyone, men fart more than women. Men are passing gas about nine times a day compared to eight times for women. Also, interestingly, 
young people report more flatulence than older people in the Big Poo Review. Now, we don't yet know whether or not this is due to not everyone actually owning up to their farts or whether there is something that explains this in more detail. This is where a deeper dive into the data will really be really helpful. Farting is a natural part of healthy digestion. When you fart, it generally should make you feel better. But if flatulence is getting in the way of your daily life, reducing the quality of your life, or you have concerns, some of the first steps you can take are to try eliminating dairy and artificial sweeteners, add more probiotic foods, and address any constipation if it's present. Talk to your GP if you need more information or if you believe that further medical evaluation is appropriate. Thank you so much for watching today. We'll bring you even more insights as they come in. So look for our next update video and make a comment below on what you found most interesting about our results about farting. I'm sure there's something that you found interesting in here. Please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. If you like the information as soon as it comes out, that's the best way for us to disseminate that information to you. Please share the app with your friends and family. Tell them about all the things that we have going on with the Zoe Health Study and also the new features that we have. Keep an eye on our website and the app. We have updates that are coming and we're excited about them. We can't wait to share them. And finally, thank you for supporting science. Keep logging in the app, keep checking out our videos, and I look forward to another conversation about digestive health and perhaps not flatulence.